Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between Gresham's Law and Fierre's Law, why it's so important, and how it applies to cryptocurrency. If you pay attention and you understand what I'm saying, you're going to understand more than 90% of the population when it comes to basic economics. Let's begin. What is Gresham's Law? It's a law that was created by Thomas Gresham, and it states that bad money drives out good money. And I'll repeat that again. Bad money drives out good money. What this means is that people will spend, quote, bad money, and this will remove the good money from circulation. The best example of this is gold. If you ever wondered, why doesn't anyone use gold to buy any products? Why don't I see gold circulating around the market? It's because gold is considered good money. People don't want to spend good money. They want to hold on to it because it gains value. So instead, they spend their, quote, bad money. And this can be any fiat dollar around the world. So people will start spending their dollars and they'll hold on to their precious gold. A good example of this is let's say you show up to a store and you want to buy a bottle of soda or maybe a bag of chips and it costs $5. So in your hand, you have $5 worth of a fiat currency and $5 worth of gold. And the owner is willing to accept either one. Which one are you going to use? Of course, you're going to use the paper currency. You don't want to get rid of that gold. That gold's valuable. In the future, it might be worth even more money. And this same theory of Gresham's Law applies to other precious metals as well, such as silver. For the same reason, that's why you won't see people using silver to buy items in the market. Right here, I'm on this website, JM Bullion, and it shows the price of silver dollars. How much should one silver dollar be worth? It should be worth one dollar, but that's not the case. Right here on the website, we can see that a silver dollar prices go for $26, $41, $28. Why isn't it costing one dollar? The reason is because these silver coins are pure silver, but what we use today is not really backed by anything. The same thing applies to other precious metals, even pennies. Pennies from 1982 and prior are worth more than pennies created after 19, 1982. Pennies have been made with an alloy com comprised of 97.5 zinc and 2.5% copper, but pennies minted before 1982 are 95% copper and 5% zinc. So all these precious metals are considered good money. People don't want to spend them. They're going to hoard them. They're going to hold them so they gain value. So the bad money drives out the good money. And all empires beforehand in history have debased their currency. What this means is they used to have pure gold coins and pure gold silver. But what they did is they would chip off a little bit of the silver, a little bit of the gold, store it, maybe create more coins, and they would add other materials, making these coins now worth much less. And this, this, this debasement kept going and going and going, eventually until the currency was worth nothing and those empires crumbled. Today, we got to a point where the, the, whole, the whole thing with uh, debasement, it's, it's gone. We don't even have money debasement anymore. We just have paper dollars. So this, this whole method of bad money has been taken to a whole nother level and people will continue to use bad money and hold on to the good money. And when it comes to cryptocurrency, we can apply Bitcoin to Gresham's Law. Close to 11 million Bitcoin haven't moved in over a year. People don't want to spend their Bitcoin. They hold it more as an investment vehicle rather than a currency. And let's say someone went back to that same store. They had $5 worth of paper currency, $5 worth of Bitcoin, and the owner is willing to accept either one. Of course, the person is going to spend their paper dollars. They want to hold on to their Bitcoin. And this whole law of Gresham's law, we know that it's true. We know that it's a law because as we know in science, it is a law if we see it time and time again, over and over, and every time it comes and it shows that it is true. But this is the issue with Gresham's Law. It's only true under certain conditions. It's only true during good times or even average times. But what happens in horrible times, disastrous times, major crisis? This is where we see the opposite, and this is known as Thiers Law, and it's named after Adolf Thiers. So in Thiers' law, it's the opposite of Gresham's law. It states 
that good money drives out bad money. So in this case, let's say we're using gold and paper dollars. Now people actually want to spend the gold. And because of that, it drives out the bad money. So the paper money is now out of circulation. And we've seen this in history. We saw this during the great inflation in the Weimar Republic in 1923, where Thiers law took place because the money in the Weimar Republic was so worthless that no one wanted to accept it. Even in 2009, we saw the hyperinflation of the Zimbabwe currency and no one wanted to accept it. The currency loses its value that as soon as someone takes it, it might lose 50% of its value, maybe even 90%. Going back to our example, again, of the grocery store, you know, you're buying chips, buying soda. They don't want to accept your paper currency because they know as soon as they hold it, it might lose 50% of its value. It might even lose 100% of its value by the next day. So instead of taking this bad money, they only want good money. And the first thing that most countries try to do when they are experiencing this is instead of using their currency, which has hyperinflated, lost its value, and no one wants to accept it, they try to participate in something called currency substitution where they can get a currency from a neighboring or foreign country that is worth more and people are willing to accept. Most countries in the world that would go through this hyperinflation of their currency, they would love to get their hands on maybe the euro or maybe on the US dollar. It'll hold more value and people will accept it. And we can see around the world that hyperinflation does occur. Just in 2019 alone, we saw some crazy numbers and I'm gonna show you some examples. Just in 2019 alone, Iran had an inflation rate of 48%. Argentina had an inflation rate of 54%. And before I continue, just to show you how bad this is, this is almost the equivalent of me giving you $1,000 and then a year later, it only has the buying power of $500. It lost 50% of its value. And the list gets worse and worse. In North Korea, they had a hyperinflation rate of 55%. South Sudan, 56%. And this is where it gets crazy. Zimbabwe, 175%. And now this is where it gets totally insane. Just in 2019, Venezuela had an inflation rate or a hyperinflation rate of 282,000%. So in Zimbabwe, in Venezuela, no one wants to accept the currency. When you go to a store, you wanna buy something, they don't want to accept it because it is worth nothing. It got so bad that Venezuelan Boulevard the, ha, is now worth more as toilet paper. And this is what all the news headlines were showing. It is more worth it for someone just to take their Venezuelan dollar, bolivars, use it as toilet paper, than to actually gather it up, bring it to the store, and buy toilet paper. That's how worthless it has become. So what's the first thing that Venezuela would participate in? They would like to participate in currency substitution, maybe get their hands on another currency, maybe the U.S. dollar. But it's not so easy. They weren't able to get their hands on the US dollar. Now bringing this back to cryptocurrency, hard money. What is hard money when it comes to cryptocurrency? What is good money? Now I'm not going to tell you my opinion and I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm just going to show you facts of what actually happened in Venezuela. Venezuela, unable to get their hands on other currencies, needed something to transact in because their boulevard was so worthless and they actually adopted Dash, the cryptocurrency. And we saw a crazy amount of increase in the usage of Dash in Venezuela, and people are spending it. They're not saving it, they're spending it. And along with Dash, people have been using Bitcoin. Bitcoin trading volumes in Venezuela are continuing to climb. And the research shows that unlike times of Gresham's Law, where people hold on to their Bitcoin and they store it, they don't wanna spend it, in Venezuela, where Thiers law applies because of the major disaster, major crisis, Bitcoin is not used as a store of value, but instead it's used as a bridge currency. And an important fact that I want to share with you is that no one is immune to these rough times. No one is immune to hyperinflation. The greatest empires in history have fallen because of hyperinflation, even Venezuela, the country that I just showed you as an example, in 1950, Venezuela was the world's fourth wealthiest nation per capita. So just in a short period of time, you can see what can happen to a country and to their money supply. So when it comes to 
Thiers' law or Gresham's law, whether it's good times, whether it's horrible times, holding good money, holding hard money benefits a person in both of these times. We do know, history shows us, that gold is a hard money in good times and in bad times. And now we can see that it's possible that when it comes to cryptocurrency, Bitcoin can also be considered a hard money. Just as we see in good times or in countries experiencing good times, people hoard their Bitcoin. And then we see in Venezuela, where Thiers law applies, people actually spend their Bitcoin along with Dash as well. Now you might be on CoinMarketCap looking at all these cryptocurrencies and wondering which one of these is hard money. I can't tell you that answer. The only thing I can tell you is what I told you today in this video and showed you the facts of what's going on in America or not just America but most places of the world where people are hoarding their Bitcoin and then what's going on in countries such as Venezuela and even Argentina where people are adopting Bitcoin. So what is hard money? That's up to you to figure out but we'll only know the true answer in many years from now. I hope that you found value in today's video. If you like this content, go down below, subscribe to the channel, show your love. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.